Before we start this video, a large thank you to Ava, Jason Lumsden, Aaron, Isfandier, Jean, Mansur, Muhammad, Marco, and Brian for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hello everybody. Okay, so a big part of Resident Evil is puzzles and doors and locks and all that stuff. So as you can see here, I got a little red beeping uh, keycard scanner. And when you unlock this door, it's going to turn green in the future. So this will be teaching us how to unlock a door using a different object somewhere else in the scene. In this case, a keycard scanner. This is a regular lock door. We'll be using a key for this one on the door itself. And this one will be an unlocked door. So let's just jump right in and begin. We're going to start with the unlocked door. Uh, so let's go to this here. And as you can see, I just have a random door uh, object here I have from a city pack. And if I just rotate it here, you'll see that the door actually will uh, will turn. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to animate this door. And you can do this with a with a square or two or just any kind of like um, generic shape. You don't need to have an actual door for this for prototyping. But if you have a door, that's cool. So I'm going to make an empty game object. I'm going to call it unlock door. I'm going to parent the actual door under the empty game object. This is because on the empty, I'm going to actually add the interactable script, which needs a collider uh, for our player to enter. That will be a trigger. This way it won't interfere with the collider of the door. Anyway, so add a script called door interactable, and then I'm going to add a box collider. I'm just going to quickly uh, cut and make this box collider the size of the door frame. Okay, there we go. I'm going to set it to is a trigger, and uh, I'm going to go down now to the door itself, the actual object, and add an animator. Now we're going to animate this. It's very simple, uh, especially for just something like a prototype. Go to animation, and then open the animation uh, window here, and click create with the door itself highlighted. Make sure you highlight the object with the animator component. And then I'm going to name this uh, open door and I'm going to save that. So make it or hit the keyframe button here and then just move the door and then move it back. And that'll make your first keyframe. And then go, I just go right to the end, uh, straight forward. And then I open the door all the way. And then what happens uh, if you were to play this now, I'm going to stop, hit the stop uh, or hit the record button again to stop it rather. Um, so now let's go into the door itself. Make sure it is not static. Even if you use a cube, I, I need to stress enough, or I can't stress enough. Make sure that the object using is not static. On check loop time. If it's static, your door will not animate. So let's go into the actual animator here and make a new state. Let's just call it empty. And let's make this the default state. So defaultly, the door is not going to start on the open door animation. And then just click set layer as default layer. Okay, now let's go back over into the scene view and go to our unlocked door. And let's just go to the door interactable script and open that up and we're going to start adding some logic. So let's go over here and erase the start and update functionality. And then let's make this uh, derive from the interactable object script. And I'm going to take a sip of tea. Um, you can override all these statements if you want uh, and, and add any logic that you would like to. We're going to keep them all the same. I'm just going to put them in here just in case you want to. Basically, uh, if you call base dot trigger enter, for example, it will run the logic on the original base class and the logic you put after that. So that's what base does if you weren't sure. I'm sure a lot of you probably already knew that, though. I'm going to make a serializable field for the animator, for the door animator. And then I'm going to come down here. And what we want to do on interact is just simply say uh, door animator, as in the animator on the door dot play as in play animation and then we pass the name of our animation in our case it's open door or in my case i should say maybe you entered something different than that uh, let's save that now and if we go to the unlock door and drag in our animator we also want to get uh the canvas so let's copy the one from our old object and paste it down here and i'm just going to basically recenter this so it's on the handle of the door that's where the little um canvas arrow should be so i'm just going to move this over and I probably need to move it out a little bit because it's probably inside the door right now. Yes, it is. Right there should be a good spot. All right, that should be good. Let's make sure we drag that in now too. So the interactable canvas, just drag that on in there like so. Now, um, just right here above open door, what we want to do is make sure we set interactable canvas set active to false. That way when we interact, it disappears. We don't want it just lingering there in the scene. So I'm going to press play and try this out. This should work, I think. So I'm going to approach the door, and I'm going to press enter. That's my interact key, and then the door will open. And there we go. The door opens. All right. So there you go, guys. That's uh, the unlocked door. But now we're going to add functionality for checking for a key, uh, or first if the door is locked, if it requires a key, what kind of key. And we're going to make an item type of key in our game. And again, if your door didn't open for some reason, uh, make sure your object is not set to static. Otherwise, it will not open. Uh, so now we have a locked door. I'm going to quickly set this door up identically to the unlocked door. So we can actually use the same animation because it uh, it just rotates the object, really. All right, so now this is set up identical to my unlocked door. I'm going to open the door interactable script again, and we're going to add uh, a lot more logic. 
So the first thing we're going to want to do, I'm just going to make a header here and call this door. This is just for the door animator, so it's out of the way of everything else. I'm then going to make a header called lock details. And inside this, I'm going to begin by writing a serializable field for a bool. I'm going to call that bool is locked. And then right below that, serializable field. I'm going to make a bool again for requires key. Because maybe you want to have a door that is locked but can't be opened. Um, that's probably not the case, but just in case, we're going to make that an option. And then lastly, below that, a serializable field for a string. And we're going to call this key ID. So if the door is locked, further action is required. We would need to use a key. And we check for that key based on the key's ID. Well, how do we do that? That's really straightforward also. So we're going to we're gonna get that done. But first, we're going to say if the door is locked. Let's open up some curly braces. Let's make some pseudocode now. We're going to send a UI pop up to our player. The door is locked. Um, if you want to, we can do a polish feature where we kind of like pan the camera to the door and stop the game time like Resident Evil does and just show the door up close and say it's locked uh, or you know leave some ominous message. But that's a polish element, so let's get the functionality down first. Then we're going to say option one, because this is what we can do now. If the player has the key, we automatically use the key and open the door. Uh, option two is we open the player's inventory and make them manually select the key. So I can show you guys how to do both, but since our inventory is not set up that way yet, we're going to do option one first. Uh, but inventory is coming out real soon. Just a couple more videos. I actually want to get a few interactables out of the way, and then we'll start that. Let's open up the item base class script, and let's add a public string item ID. So this is how we're going to compare the keys ID. Now, uh, we're going to work, do some mild work on the inventory, and this will be permanent after we uh, we set this up, even with the new grid system. But first, let's make a, an item called key item. Uh, we're going to derive this from the base class of item. Right now, nothing is going to change, but in the future, in case you want to make some stuff for key specifically, we have a class for that now. Um, all we need is the ID, which every item in the game will have because we need that for our safe system in the future. So let's just make a, or rather copy the create asset menu here and just change this to items slash key item. Not keys, whoops, that'll just be key item. And then we can make one of these now and... Uh, we need to create an interactable to pick this up. Now, I just got this key off of um, just a random 3D model website, Sketchfab, I believe it was. And I just looked up low poly key, and this was there for free. So if you guys don't have one, you can grab one if you want. I'm going to put a crate in here for some, I guess, ambience and put, and put the key on top of it. Uh, and then I'm going to make a script that allows us to pick up items and add them to our inventory. So this will be a pickup interactable. This is new as well. So I'm going to put the key here, just not going to spend too much time on this, just going to put it there so it's in plain sight. I should probably upsize a little bit because that's rather small. That looks fine. You know what, two. Let's just make it an even number. You know how I am with that stuff. Okay, that's fine. Now, I am going to essentially make this key an interactable, like our creative ammo, but we're going to be able to pick it up, and then it will delete the key from the scene and add it to our inventory. So let's add a script to this uh, and a sphere collider. The sphere collider is going to make the radius whatever I want it to be. Basically, when you step in the sphere collider, as you know by now, this is going to trigger the interaction um, of the key, which sort of let you pick it up as long as your character is standing within this uh, sphere. So just set it up how you want it to be and make sure you set it to is trigger. Otherwise, you won't be able to enter the sphere. And then I'm going to attach the script. I'm going to call mine pick up item interactable, which is pretty self-explanatory. You interact with the item, it picks it up and adds it to your inventory. So this is a script we're going to revisit with the grid inventory system just a little bit because we need to check uh, for placement in our inventory on a specific grid. But for now, this is fine. We can just add it to our inventory and make a note that we need to come back and apply a check. Because if there's no space, obviously you can't add it to your inventory. Again, I'm just going to add the on trigger enter, uh, on trigger stay, and on trigger um, exit. If you want to change something for your project in particular, there's a place to add it. And then I'm going to add the override for interact, which we will actually modify. So I'm going to add a serializable field for a variable of type item. And this is going to be the item we pick up when we interact with this uh, object. So all we do is say player.player .player inventory manager. And then we want to add an item to our list of items in our inventory. Now there's a problem. We don't have a list yet. So I'm going to explain why this is very important. Even when we have our grid inventory, the game still needs to know every list or every item in our inventory uh, by ID for things like if you want to reload your pistol, for example, you have to check and make sure there is pistol ammo in your inventory. We do this by keeping a list, as I'm writing now, of items. And we're going to call this items in inventory. So every time we add something to the inventory grid or take it away, we add or take away from this list. And I'm going to make it common here so we remember this. When we have our grid style inventory, this is what I'm saying here now, uh, this will serve as a list. That will show every item we currently 
have. Uh, so this is going to be basically used for, I'll make an example here, this will be used for checking or checks rather, for example, reloading a gun or reloading a pistol. Uh, you would check and make sure you have the ammo in your inventory, and if the ammo is in the grid, it is in this list. And then you would detract from that stack of ammo, and then it edits the item in this list. Or opening a door in our case right now, we check if a door requires a key that we have the key in our inventory. So that's why this list is so useful. And anything that requires a check for an item in our inventory, which a Resident Evil game does a whole lot because of puzzles, we, we are going to use this list. So this list is a permanent feature in the code. Uh, the item above that, about the ammo stack, that's going to be removed when we add the group inventory. So let's say player, player inventory dot items in inventory dot add, and we're adding the item, and that's it. So now let's go back to the door interactable, and let's make uh, some, or a comment here and say option one, because that's the option I'm going to go with right now. In the future, I'll do option two as well, and you can pick which one you want. Uh, we're going to make a for each loop. We're going to make the variable of type item. And we're going to check the player dot player inventory manager dot items in inventory. So what are we doing? Well, we're going to check every item in our character's inventory for uh, a key. And you can't hold that many items in your inventory in Resident Evil, so it's not that much to check, really. We're going to say if item dot item ID is equal to the key ID we have up here, then we know that we're good to open the door. So what we will do is say is locked is equal to false. And that's it. That's very, very simple. We have the key to inventory. We check for the key. We know the key exists. We unlock the door. And then right below that, we say if the door is not locked, what we want to do is play the animation and disable um, our interactable canvas, just like you would with a regular unlocked door. So uh, above, we want to make a check to above that if it requires a key and it is locked. We don't want to check the inventory for no reason. So if this door does require a key and it is in fact locked, let's check your inventory. And then after that, if the door is now unlocked, then we play the open um, the door animation and we disable the canvas. So I'm just going to make a comment here too. If this door requires a key and it is currently locked, we're going to scan our player's inventory for said key. I'm just going to make a habit of commenting everything. So if you come back to this in the future, it's very easy to see instantly what this does. And then down here, I'm going to make another comment saying, if the key is present, then we're going to simply unlock the door. And then as you know, down below, since it shows here, we have animation for opening the door. We're going to say, if the door is unlocked, we just open the door. I think you should, if you if you don't already, I'm sure a lot of you do, just be in the, the habit of commenting a lot of your code because when you come back to stuff months later, it makes your life so much easier. All right, so let's save the game and then go back here now and go into the scene. I'm sure there's something I forgot to do. Yes, there is. Got to drag in the canvas on this key interactable. Uh, okay, this key has a lot of parts, so I'm just going to make an empty game object and drag all the parts of that key in there as well. First, let's copy our interactable canvas, paste it under the key object. And then I'm going to right-click this key, create an empty game object because there's a lot of mesh components here. Just going to drag them all inside of that right there. I'm going to unpack the prefab first, though, because it might complain. Whoops, there we go. All right, cool. So, looks good. Now, we need to still create the item uh, of the key itself. We don't have that done. And I'm going to make sure I drag the canvas to a proper place so it indicates that you are indeed in within interactable range of this key. I'm going to drag in the canvas, and now let's go and make our actual item. So, I'm going to go to Data, and you can see we have weapons, zombie actions. Let's make a new folder. I'm just going to call this keys. You can make one for items and drag the weapons and ammo boxes in there too if you want. It's probably a better way to do it. I'm going to make item, key item. I'm going to call this uh, creepy door key. And I'm just going to make the item name key. And I'll make the item ID and make whatever you want, by the way. We'll say uh, key 01. And I am going to drag this new scriptable object into the key. I'm going to go to the locked door. Going to check is locked, requires key, and make the key ID key 01. That's very important. Your key ID has to be the same as the item ID on the actual key to open the door. Otherwise, it will not open. Drag in the creepy door key. And I'm going to go back to the interact here now on the pickup item interactable. Uh, make a comment here in the future. But check for space in your inventory. Select which slot on the grid you want to place this item in. And then you just pick up the item if all these checks pass, obviously. And what you want to do then is delete the game object in the scene so you can't pick it up twice. So you just say destroy uh, and then put in the brackets the game object. All right, I'm going to take a sip of tea. Excellent. Let's uh, save that. And I put this is locked in the wrong spot. Make sure that's outside of the brackets of if requires key and is locked. Otherwise, you will not be able to open your unlocked doors. All right. Now I'm going to go to this door and I'm going to press enter. 
and it unlocks. That still works. Cool. Go into the key, uh, pick it up. You can see there the interactable canvas. It disappears. Excellent. Let's check our character's inventory to make sure that actually went in there. You can see here items in inventory, creepy door key. All right, let's proceed to the creepy door. Um, I think I forgot to position the canvas on this door properly, so it might not show up. Let's just check. And I definitely did. Okay, I'm going to fix that real quick. Let me just back out of the game here now. Okay, it's fixed. Now, if I press enter on the door with the key inventory, it opens up. So there you go. Now, before I call this a conclusion, let's make sure we can't open the door without the key in our inventory. I probably should have put a debug log saying door is locked, but we know. Okay, so let's remove the key from inventory. Let's start the game here now, and let's go over. And we sh still should get the has interacted debug message, but it shouldn't open. And yep, okay, we have interacted and the door is not opening. So there you go, guys. That is the framework for our door system. We're going to expand this a whole lot. We can go a whole lot of places with this, uh, like the key cards and the sound effects and a lot more cool stuff. But before I go, I'm also going to show you how to make a door real quick. Um, if you don't actually have a door object, it's very, very simple. So take like a just a generic shape in the scene, like a cube, for example. I'm just going to take one of these cubes off of the wall I have made over here. Um, I only need one. I don't know why I took two. Delete it. Uh, make it the height that you want a door to be and just drag it into the frame. And now what you want to do is make an empty game object inside of it. I'm going to drag it out of here first so you can see what's going on. I'm just going to rename it so it's very clear right at the top of the hierarchy here. Keep this stuff clean. So door and I'm going to create an empty game object called this door hinge and then on parent that game object uh, after you put it on the left side of the door as if it were a hinge because this is where the door is going to rotate. Think of this as its pivot. So if you can get a good view, really go to um, whatever this view is called here now and just get real close. I can't see because there's cubes in my way, but you want to make sure it's right on the, the left side of the, or the right side of the door, like right there where we think the hinge would be. The height doesn't matter, just that position to the left or right. Uh, once that's done, undrag the door hinge and parent the door object itself under the door hinge. Now, if you rotate the door hinge, check out what happened. Oh, I got to make that door a lot thinner. One second. That's, that's like still the size of a wall on a cube. So shrink that down to width. There we go. Put that out here a bit more. That looks good. Now, if I rotate the door, you can see it opens up like it like a regular door would. So that's just how to make like a simple prototype door if you don't have an actual object. It works the same way. You don't need an actual door model. This will do just as good if you're just trying to get the logic down. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to drop a like and leave a comment. It does genuinely help out my channel so, so much. I appreciate all of you that do that on every single video. You have no idea how much that means. And a special thank you to my patrons, as always, for allowing me to do this, and I love doing this. So we're going to further expand upon these systems uh, in at least another episode, maybe two, and then we're going to go to the inventory systems. So I will see you guys in the next episode.